20 tips to help you find cheap flights in 2022 and beyond. I'm Chris. This is Yellow Productions. I do travel guides that are fun, informative, and entertaining. This video, it's part of my travel advice series where I'm helping you get the most bang for your buck on travel, not just flights, but hotels, rental cars. You'll find more of those videos at the end of this video or in the description. And before we get into number one, I would like to thank this video sponsor, Top Cash Back. We'll talk more about how Top Cash Back can help you save money on flights later on. Now let's get right into it with tip number one, don't be a sheep. Don't go where everybody else is going. Where everybody else is going is probably going to be expensive because there's more demand than there is capacity. You want to think unlike everybody else and think about what are the destinations that have lots of flights but not many people going to them. For example, New York City. New York City is served by almost every carrier there is in the world and there's not a lot of people going to New York City. Why? New York City, big business destination, not a big leisure destination. So there's a lot of extra seats, there's a lot of extra planes, and there's a lot of big planes going to New York City. So you're gonna find cheap flights going to destinations like New York City. Now, if you're going to a ski destination for this winter, that is likely gonna be really expensive. Why? Ski destinations typically are served by small planes with very little frequency. And so there is often more demand than there is capacity, which makes prices go up. Now, one leisure destination that is actually still pretty cheap that also has a lot of demand is Hawaii. Why is Hawaii still really cheap to fly to? Well, because there's still more capacity than there is demand. Every air carrier has repositioned their flights that used to do business routes, and now they're sending them to Hawaii because they want to capitalize on all of the interest and all of the potential new customers that are flying to Hawaii. Also, Hawaii still doesn't have a lot of international visitors, which made up for a significant portion of their visitors, so you can still find cheap flights to leisure destinations like Hawaii, but think, where's a place that has lots of flights, big planes, and that if you like check the seat maps and things like that, that those planes look fairly empty. Tip number two, be on the lookout for new routes. With the way the world changed, there's less business travel and more leisure travel. People are going to different places and have different travel patterns than they used to. And so many air carriers are launching new routes. When they do launch a new route, that's typically when they have a big blowout bonanza sale. So be on the lookout for news, emails, things on air carriers websites that announce new routes. And you wanna be like in the first three days that those tickets go on sale because they'll typically be dropping the prices way low when they first come out to drum up demand and excitement for those routes. A great example of this is actually the trip we just took to Vancouver, Canada. We live in Orange County, California. Air Canada just started offering a new flight from Orange County to Vancouver that they've never offered before. Why? Because Canada just reopened to tourism from the U.S. and Air Canada's planes likely were doing nothing except sitting around and so they said, hey, why don't we at least capitalize on some of those people from Orange County that might want to come here to Canada since a lot of people can't come from other places. And when they first put those flights on sale, they were like a couple hundred bucks round trip for the tickets. Look later, they're $500, but in the first three days, quite cheap. Tip number three, when you're looking for flights, consider alternate airports. If you're flying into Los Angeles, for example, you might think, I'll go to LAX. That's the major airport. Did you know there are seven airports that serve the Los Angeles region? In addition to LAX, you could fly into Burbank, Ontario, Long Beach, Orange County, John Wayne, San Diego, and if you're coming from Latin America, you might even consider flying into Tijuana, Mexico. Yes, any of those airports other than LAX might actually be cheaper they might be more expensive, but you know what? Finding cheap flights is a little bit of research. It doesn't come magically. So look at a city and look up other airports than just the major one. For example, London Heathrow is the airport many tourists fly into London, but it's also the most expensive. There are five other airports that service London that you might find cheaper than London Heathrow. Flying into New York City, there's three airports in New York City, LaGuardia, JFK, and Newark. And if you really wanna get advanced thinking about what flights are cheaper in different airports, Think about what's the majority carrier in an airport. For example, in Newark, the majority carrier is United Airlines. And so they're probably gonna be the most expensive in Newark, but the other carriers that are smaller and have less flights in Newark are probably gonna be cheaper than United because they're trying to compete against United, the big carrier in that airport. So think about the uncarriers or the smaller carriers in airports at your destination for cheaper flights. Tip number four, consider airlines with flexible change policies. In today's world, 
world where everything's changing and you really don't seem to know whether you're going to be able to go someplace tomorrow or the next day, really look at those change fees before you book your flight because change fees, if you do have to change or cancel, what are the refund fees? They could eat you alive or eat you out of the entire ticket value. So, I think you should, if you hadn't valued uh, free changes or free refunds before, definitely consider that higher in your priority list for 2022. And remember that change fees or refund fees are typically per passenger per ticket. We'll talk more about that a little bit later. Tip number five, be flexible in your travels with your destinations and your dates. If you wanna go to New York City for New Year's Eve, just like everybody else, or for Christmas, you wanna go to that ski destination, guess what, those are gonna be expensive. But if you're flexible on your days, if you're willing to fly on Christmas Day or you're willing to fly on New Year's Day, you can get significantly better prices. The difference of one day can make a difference of hundreds of dollars in your airfare ticket. So definitely play around with your beginning and end dates to see if you find a little bit of wiggle room and price just by going one day to the left or one day to the right. One of the best ways to also find fares if you're flexible is to use the flexible dates feature that many search engines have. There's usually a box that says my dates are flexible, I'm flexible, use flexible dates. Check that box and then you're often presented with like a matrix of fares where you can see, hey, this day for the outbound and this day for the return end up being the cheapest. Tip number six, use multiple airfare search engines when you're pricing out your flights. I particularly like Kayak. I'm also really enjoying Google Flights. Google Flights has a really cool explore feature where if you're flexible on your destination, like you don't know where you want to go, you can use this. You can set your home airport and then it'll tell you what it costs to go to a variety of other destinations. So you can find the cheap destination that maybe you never considered, but you'll go to because it's cheap. Kind of a weird thing about living on the west coast of the USA. I often find it cheaper to fly to Japan or even Singapore from Los Angeles than I do to New York City. Just because there's so much extra capacity to those Asian destinations out of Los Angeles that the flights are way cheaper to go three times as long than they are to go to a neighboring city in my same country. Now also remember when you're using these search engines that not all airlines appear in the search engines. For example, Southwest typically doesn't appear in a lot of search engines, so you'll have to go price them out separately. I'd also encourage you when you narrow in on your carrier and a flight that looks cheap, go to that airline's website and see if you can book it there, see if that price comes up, because it might even come up a little bit cheaper on the airline's website. Never know, weird things in travel sometimes. Sometimes just the fares don't get aggregated to all of the search engines and take their prices that they give you with a grain of salt because sometimes you'll see that $200 fare, but then when you click in to actually book it, it's not there anymore because sometimes that data is a little old. Tip number seven, plan in advance or last minute. Chris, aren't those two different things? They are two different things, but let me talk through it. The About the best window to plan in advance is about three months out. That's when I start to look at prices. I like to book within about two months out. You know, that, that month of looking at flights gives me an opportunity to know what prices look like, to know whether I'm getting a good price. But now on the note of last minute booking in today's world of the pandemic, the airlines are having a really hard time predicting how many people are gonna fly all of their models are just thrown out the window. And so you can also find some really good deals at the last minute as the airlines basically put their seats on a fire sale to be like, this plane's half empty. It's two days before departure. Nobody's coming. Drop those prices way down to see if we can capitalize on any weekend whim travelers. If you're that flexible, then just look a couple days out and say, hey, what trips can we take this weekend? I had a friend of mine who booked a trip from San Diego to the Big Island Hawaii on Alaska Airlines for less than $200 round trip just as a weekend trip because prices were so cheap. Now, the exception to my three month or last minute rule is if you're booking holiday travel, you're booking things around Thanksgiving, Christmas, July 4th, you may wanna consider booking those a year out. Also, if you're booking award travel, you may wanna book that a year out too because that's often when award availability opens up and airlines often release their award seats something between 365 and 330 days before travel. Pro tip, if you wanna to go to a destination in the world that currently isn't open yet, 
consider speculatively booking flights anyway. The trip we recently took to Vancouver when Air Canada put those tickets on sale, Canada was actually not yet open to international tourists. We had speculatively booked that trip, assuming that Air Canada was offering this route, likely talking to the government in coordination with when it was going to open, because as soon as Canada announced they opened, the prices of those tickets shot way up. So if you want to go to Japan, consider booking a flight right now and hope that Japan opens. If it doesn't, make sure you booked it with an airline that offers free change, easy refund, those sorts of things, so then you can just kick the can down the road. Do not speculatively book non-changeable, non-cancelable tickets and then come back to me and say, but Chris, you said to book it when the country's not open. I said to book a changeable and easily refundable ticket speculatively. That's actually helped us save a lot of money this year. Tip number eight, know how to spot a good price. Airline fares fluctuate wildly. They go up, they go down in an hour's notice, seemingly with no reason. That's why it's important when you decide to go someplace to start searching every day for the prices and just taking a look at what they look like so you know what are good and what are bad prices. Kayak can help you with that, kayak.com. They have a little price estimate guess where they tell you, we think this is a good price or we think fares will go up. We think the average price is this. That's semi-useful. Kayak also does have a really neat fare watch feature where you can have Kayak notify you if prices drop on a route that you're looking at. When I'm starting my planning to a destination, I always sign up for the Kayak fare watch on that route. Tip number nine, pay attention to the fare rules. Airline tickets have some bizarre rules sometimes about how you can book them and how you can use them. Sometimes you have to book seven days in advance, 14 days in advance, 21 days in advance. Sometimes you have to stay over Saturday nights. Sometimes you need to travel on a certain day. Whatever you've done to find that cheap ticket, if you move it a day, you move it a month, you might not find those cheap tickets again. So if you're on the airline website or sometimes on the search engines, you can click on fare rules and you can read through it to figure out what all that gobbledygook is. But if the price looks really really, really good, you might want to dive into those details and see what makes it so good if you're trying to replicate it for different days or different destinations. Now, my pro tip here is to avoid basic economy tickets. This is something many of the major carriers have rolled out and they say it's to save you money, it's to make more money for themselves, where they've basically unbundled everything from the ticket, seats cost you money, checking in at the counter costs you money, basic economy generally costs more people more money or gives them more headaches than it's really worth, so spend that extra $30 and book a regular economy ticket not the basic economy one. Tip number 10, look out for airline fare sales. When do airlines have their fare sales? You know what, each one's different, but Black Friday, typically fare sales. Summer holiday, typically fare sales. Winter travel, typically fare sales. How do you find these things out? you visit the airline's website. That's a great way to do it. You can also sign up for your favorite airline's email list and they'll email you when there's fare sales. If there's one site that you're looking at to see that has the best information aggregated together, I really like theflightdeal.com. They organize it by the airport that you're leaving from so you don't get like all the deals in the world, but if you say, hey, I'm leaving from LAX, then you can go to that page and see all the good fares from your destination. Now, I'll point out if you're looking for good airline prices, be careful if you're booking mistake fares because prices that the airlines put in by mistake that are too good to be true do often end up getting canceled and then you don't get that fare honored. Sometimes they are honored and in that case, you really get lucky. So whether you wanna book a mistake fare, that's just what your tolerance for risk is. Tip number 11, use a cashback site like Top Cashback. Top Cashback is sponsoring this video, but I use them all the time to save money on air travel, on rental cars, on hotels. But in this video, we're talking about air travel. And so on Top Cashback, you can save money on tons of different airlines, Hawaiian Airlines, Qatar Airlines, British Airways. The way it works is once you sign up for a Top Cashback account, you can browse through their site and you can see the airlines or other vendors that are offering cash back. You just click into their website and it'll bring you to the airline just as if you were booking it with them. Your visit gets recorded. So here going into Hawaiian Airlines, we book it just like we would any other Hawaiian Airlines flight, but now we'll be getting one and a half percent cash back. A pretty good way to get some extra money back on those cheap tickets that you're finding with all the other tips. If you want to sign up for Top Cash Back right now, I've got a link in the description. If you hit that link, you will get $10 extra cash back on your first $25 purchase. 
pretty good deal. Tip number 12, look for tickets as one person. What do I mean by that? Well, anytime you search for airfare, it asks you how many people are traveling and sometimes one person can be cheaper than two or three or four. Why? Because airlines have these things called fare buckets and sometimes they load the cheap fares into these fare buckets and there might only be one cheap fare available. And if you're booking two or three, then you don't find the cheap fare because there's only one fare in that fare bucket. But if you book that one ticket, sometimes they'll replenish another ticket into that cheap fare bucket. And you can book that one and sometimes you get another one. So consider looking at one and see if you find it cheaper. If you find out you booked one and then the second one's more expensive, well, most airlines offer like a free refund, free cancellation, no questions asked in the first 24 hours. So just make sure you're doing that in the first 24 hours if you found out the second ticket got way too expensive. Tip number 13, use one-way fares on potentially multiple airlines to complete a round trip. For example, you can fly San Diego to New York City on JetBlue, and then coming back, you can fly on American Airlines. Those would be priced out as two different tickets, but it might turn out that those two one-way tickets on two different carriers is cheaper than a round trip on any one carrier individually. Now, just a note for safety is if you might be changing it, don't book it this way because more tickets and more carriers ends up with more change fees or more cancellation fees if you do have to change or cancel your travel because you'll be paying those change fees to both carriers. Tip number 14, fly a budget carrier. Consider a carrier like Southwest, Frontier, Spirit, Ryanair, EasyJet. Of these, I like Southwest the best because they're a budget carrier that does not have a lot of hidden fees. Actually, they don't have any hidden fees. There's no change fees on Southwest. There's no baggage check fees. I really like Southwest Airlines if I'm booking a short leisure route, particularly if I'm flying into Las Vegas. If you're booking on some of those other carriers that love their fees, be really careful, do your homework, see what fees you'll incur on top of your ticket price because many of these carriers, the Ryanairs, the EasyJets of the world, they are proud of the fact that they often charge passengers more in fees than in the original ticket price. So beware. Tip number 15, book from a different city or pay in a foreign currency. This one's a bit more advanced, but on many airline websites, you kind of set like where you're living from. And if you change your region and you're booking from a different country, maybe you're booking a Japan Airlines ticket from Japan and paying in Japanese yen, the price might actually be cheaper. Not might, we have actually saved quite a bit of money using this technique booking on Japanese airlines. Even though we're flying from Los Angeles, they market these things on their Japanese websites to their Japanese customers that end up with cheaper fares than what they market to their American customers. So consider booking from a different country, location, and currency. Tip number 16, use a travel agent or a consolidator. This is another tip, particularly if you're flying to Asia, because many Asian carriers like Singapore Airlines, for example, or China Airlines offer fares that they don't advertise, that aren't on their website, that aren't on any search engine, that the only way you can book them is with a travel agent that you call on the phone. And often these fares, they'll have to wait list you for them, and then you wait a little while and then find out whether you get them. But we've been able to score some of our best deals to Asia using a travel agent that specializes in Asian travel. Tip number 17, book a connecting flight. Chris, are you telling me more flights and more flight time will be cheaper than a direct flight? Yeah. You know why? People like direct flights better. Connecting flights, they like them less because they take longer and they're more of a hassle. So direct flights will cost you more. Connecting flights will typically cost you less. If time is not important to you or the risk of a connection, then book the connecting flight and save yourself some money. Tip 18, buy gift cards at a discount. You can often find airline gift cards at a discount, in particular from Costco. I was just at Costco this morning before shooting this video and they had Alaska Airlines gift cards face value $500 on sale for $450. Costco has previously had American Airlines $300 gift cards 
on sale for $270. Basically, they're about 10% off if you find airline gift cards at Costco. Tip number 19, book award tickets. If you're a frequent traveler, if you earn miles on your credit cards, a great way for the cheapest flights is to use award miles. Now, I'm not going to get into this in detail in this video because I have a whole hour video about tips for booking award tickets and tips for earning miles. You can find links to those in the description of this video. Tip number 20, I want to share some things with you that don't matter for finding cheap flights. Day of the week, doesn't matter what day of the week you're booking your flights. There's no like common time or day that airlines give the best prices. You may have heard Tuesday, you may have heard Saturday, you may have heard midnight, doesn't matter. Prices are all over the map and they go up and down all the time. There's not one good time or day to book your flights. Standing on one foot doesn't help, burning incest doesn't help, and human sacrifice, that's definitely not going to help either. Well, if you are planning to book some airfare for cheap, definitely sign up for Top Cash Back. You'll find a link in the description below to get you some extra cash back on your purchase. And up here on the screen, you can find links to my how to get good deals on hotels and how to get good deals on rental cars. As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you in one of these videos.